big deal. We got to get right into it, man. And Diddy, his house got raided. Right How you feel about that? Well, I think that the authorities came up with enough evidence to go into a judge by using the civil cases that has came upon him. So because they used the civil cases and found that there was some criminal activity that may have been found at some one of those people who like Cassie, Jonathan, Jonathan Odie didn't have a uh, civil case against him, but Cassie, Jonathan Odie, and Lil Rob, they used the evidence that they had or the statements they made and convinced the judge that there was enough uh, probable cause to go in there with a search warrant. But the way they did the search warrant and how they did it, man, I thought he was El Chapo or somebody. You know, they took a tactical team in there, brother. They had tactical units. You understand? And it was for allegedly a sex crime. But they took, yo, my man, you, did you see the artillery and the, the, the way the, the Homeland Security came in there? My man, you would have swore, you know, it was going to be some gun violence up in there, how they came to it. So my feeling of it is, is that uh, enough statements have been made that they could probably prove they did enough investigation. See, people think that that when the federal government go in there on you, the reason they got a 99% uh, conviction rate because most people say, <laughs> they got me. They don't go to court with them. So for them to have a team in New York, because they didn't really mention too much about New York. They had property in New York, property in Miami, and a property in LA, all simultaneously hit, those different agencies had to get together, plan that, and that's not no bull, and you know, that's a lot of manpower, a lot of money. So they wanna know uh, how they spent the taxpayer. The taxpayer's gonna know why you spending my money on this to come up with nothing. So you best believe they had something in the first place to go up in there, either through, like I said before, wiretaps. You understand? Because if they convinced the judge that they need a warrant, they had wiretaps, surveillance, and different things that was going on. And then, like, it's a lot of crazy statements that have been made. And you got to look at that interview that uh, Jonathan Odie did, bro. You know what I'm saying? That was probably more damaging than Cassie. And uh, that was more damaging than Cassie, because check this out. He said Diddy was transporting liquid cocaine on his private jets. Now, the DEA wasn't involved in this. It was the FBI and the Homeland Security, basically. That's because of the sex trafficking thing. But if they find any of that stuff in any one of his houses, there's a problem. Even if they find illegal guns, the constitutional right goes the right to bear arms, but he got to have licenses for that. Shit. So if anybody got legal, illegal guns up in there, if they find any kind of drugs to a certain, a high amount, cocaine and weed. I don't think Diddy going to get charged because what he did, he put everything in his kid's name and his company. Did you see the video of his kids in handcuffs? Yeah, that's a tactical thing. The kids being in handcuffs is a tactical thing that law enforcement use, you understand, hoping that people who've never been in handcuffs before, that it either scares them or want to make them talk. There's no reason after they searched those kids because they didn't have a search warrant for bodies. They had a search warrant for like materials, laptops, telephones, uh, uh, logs, p 
pictures, tapes. You know, that's what they search warrant is for. They didn't have a search warrant for bodies. So those kids, when they came out, they should have searched them. And then, yo, listen, y'all sitting down right there. That was that was a that was a a, 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 a tactical move to get them to talk and to scare them into saying something, you know, by keeping them handcuffed like that. They didn't have to do those kids like that. None of those kids have that I know of criminal cases against them or known for criminal activity. So there was no reason for them to do that. If them was the damn Rockefellers or, or, or somebody else, they wouldn't have had their kids handcuffed like that. But you got to realize their father has painted a crazy picture to the authorities. You understand? It's a crazy picture, and people don't realize this, brother. First and foremost, Puff has been dodging the legal system for years. His affiliation with BMF, even though Meech has said that Puff never did anything, Puff never been around her, they still was partying together. So in the authorities' mind, they feel like Puff knew what Meech was doing. Then with the introduction to Jacob and different people, and a lot of people going to jail for money laundering and stuff like that, Puff being, um, and this is documented, Puff being a CI for an FBI agent. I said this years ago that Kim and Kirk Burroughs took some paperwork. They was taking some papers up to the to the uh, uh, FBI and stuff like when they was here in New York. They was taking paperwork up there and stuff like that. Don't know what it was, but later on found out that he was a CI. You understand? Now, what happens? He don't have that. The guy probably, that was 20, 30 years, 20 some years ago. The guy probably retired. Puff ain't dealing with him. No, he didn't pass Puff on or something like that. So now, Puff been dodging the legal system with the uh, uh, people had it wrong. They think it was with the black mafia family. No, it was with butt naked. I said this years ago. The person that he said is a senior advisor, Corey Jacobs. Corey had nine 16 of life sentences for drug trafficking. You make him your senior advisor, even though that was your man, he coming home. That's your man, pots and pots and pants. But Wolf was the one who took care of them when they was away. You know what I'm saying? Wolf was the one who took care of them. So now, you got all these, you know, these characters, you know, around you. What they gonna come, what they gonna think when they come to your house? They got the evidence or they had statements that you blew up Kid Cuddy's car. You understand what I'm saying? They they have statements that, you know, you may have been affiliated with people being shot. So they come to your house like this. They treat your kids like this. Based on the pictures you have played to the authorities. So them having his kids like that, I think that was wrong. After they searched those kids, make sure they didn't have no weapons on them, sit them down on the ground, make them feel comfortable because at this time, they're not criminals. They, they, haven't, they haven't committed any crimes. I see, I see. Speaking of drugs, right, because you made a comment about it earlier, how do you feel about Diddy's drug mule getting arrested? The, the news about them arresting the mule, now, they're going to have to prove that. Now, if that guy becomes a, a witness, and if they can track anything back to Puff with that, that's going to be one of their star witnesses. Mm, damn. Because, see, they will give him Leniency. They were like, yo, listen, man, we, hey, hey, buddy, listen here. We don't really want you. 
you know, we know you was just doing this to, you know, you were doing this to take care of your family, feed your moms. You know what I'm saying? Pay your rent. We know that. This guy's living out in his mansion, using you. Then that guy becomes a star witness. Crazy, man. So I want to backtrack, right? I want to backtrack to a comment you made earlier about Diddy and how, you know, over the years, he's been having all these run-ins with the police. Do you think the feds took notice of that? And they, you know, at this point, they like, yo, we're going to crack down on Diddy? What happens is, is that the police will bring in a CI and will use him like she was a $3 hoe. That's a confidential informant. They'll let you do crimes as long as you don't do no murders and stuff like that. They'll let you go around and pay you. When I was in law enforcement, dog, they paid confidential informants $250 for revolvers, $500 for automatic weapons, $750 to $1,500 for uh, semi-automatic guns and rifles and machine guns and shit like that. Some confidential informants got payment like that. And plus, they get 8% of a case. 8% of a case. So if they bring in a bop, just say, they bring in a case, $100,000. That's 8000 what's that? Let's do it, what's that? $8,000. That's 8000 They bring in a million dollar case. A million dollar case, that person is getting $80,000. I mean like $80,000 on it. I think I think if you're talking about 8%, you know what I mean? So I'm saying that to say this, confidential forms get paid good, but Puff was a millionaire. Him being a confidential form and him getting money like that, it was favors. He been getting favors and been paying law enforcement people for years to protect him. You understand? To protect him. We had a lot of people on the payroll when we was doing security. Everybody had, somebody might have this, this first 10 hours, that 10 hours or whatever. He was paying law enforcement. He had a budget for law enforcement. Now, if something goes wrong, those people got friends in certain places. Then, plus, he tells his handler, yo, can you make this go away for me? I'll give you this and that. Now, that could be a lot of speculations or whatever like that. But why would you have or be working for an FBI agent if you're not an informant, why? So when you got that kind of money, you could hire people to make a lot of things go away for you. Like you hire lawyers. Those lawyers have police officers and people working for them and investigators. Those investigators were former officers. So all of them in the backyard and Diddy bed together. So what you think happened if he was an informant? Like what made him turn on him? Like I said, some people could retire. His name is too much in the news. Like, listen here, bro. They don't want you to be always in the news in a negative form. There's people that's probably worse than Diddy, but they not always in the news in the negative form. And then, like I said before, when he went against one of the world's biggest distributors of alcohol and spirits, they put out a campaign against him. They called their friends. They made him look real bad in the media. And a lot of that shit didn't go away, bro. 
It just compelled, compiled, compiled, compiled. And now with Cassie with her stuff, that Jonathan Odie, Lil Rob, and the four other people that filed cases. I think he got like three to four other cases that's filed against him that they trying to work out instead of going into court. How you feel about the news that broke that Diddy, he gave up the rest of his shares in revolt? Listen, there is no, he has to do that because no company wants to do business with somebody who, who is being accused have allegations against them for sexual misconduct and deviant behavior. Nobody wants to do business with that. All the shareholders, it ain't nothing that he's given up. They like, yo, listen, give me that. Take, they said, <laughs> they did a ditty. Take that, take that. You understand? They are gonna take that from them. The shareholders is gonna say, yo, listen to me. We all gonna pull out. <laughs> no diddy but we all gonna pull out our shares and everything if you don't give up what you have in the company did you see that video that went viral a diddy pacing around the airport after his houses got raided i seen that video i seen that video and i seen that look in his face before i seen that look in his face you know what i'm saying um when he was with the same gang and uh, Mike Owens, a.k.a. Mike Cock, everybody could tell him. D. Ferg did a collection for him because he didn't know how he was going to pay his rent and he didn't know how he was going to uh, 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 pay his rent, uh, child support, and his car note because he had one of those uh, drop-top cabarets Volkswagens. So Mike gave 5000 I wasn't giving a nigga nothing. I'm just telling you right now. D, D was just collecting money for niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yo, man, we got to make sure because he want to kill himself. He going to kill himself. Diddy had that pace and he had that look in his face that he know something may be wrong or they may have something on him because they took things out of there. We may not have seen what they took, but they had bags and boxes of stuff that they took out of there. So he knows, he's getting a play-by-play -play of what's going on. And even back then, doing that city college, when he, was, when he was fired from Uptown Records, he was making statements about doing this stuff. He had that same look in his face. Yeah, he looked worried, man. I'm not going to lie for a split second, man. I felt bad for him for a split second, but yeah. Like, everybody, I get all kind of hate mail, IGs, talking about that I'm trying to take a black man down. No, 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 no. I went through every step you supposed to go through when you got a problem, you got a situation, you got an issue with a man. You understand? I get in contact with them. Tried with mutual friends. Let's sit down and talk. What you did to Wolf's mother wasn't right, bro. You don't talk to her like that. If Wolf was alive, he'd take your head off. You understand? Try to talk to him. People, when they start getting in this pile, certain, certain positions, have a certain amount of money, they don't look back. Some of them don't look back and don't think they have to come back to the people that help them get to those positions. You understand? I don't care what nobody say. You understand? If somebody helps you and use their ability and their talents to help you get in position and get to certain places and do certain things, you come back and you make sure things is all right. You don't disrespect people's mothers. You don't disrespect your friends that took their money to make sure you was all right when you was wrong, when you was messed up. You don't do that, brother. So by him doing the things that he did and taking the avenue that he took, 
he's suffering the consequence and I don't feel bad for him at all. Because people was trying to talk to him. People was trying to tell him. You couldn't pull him by the coat and let him know anything. You understand? They messed up the game, brother. When he put that shit out with them, money, power, respect, it ain't never been like that. It ain't never been like that. You got your respect in the street that gave you your power, that brought you your money. Totally different thing. He let that money, power, and respect go to his head, but he had it ass backwards. So I do I do I do I care what happened? Nah. He got enough, he got enough money to buy his way out of this. So we think. So when you look at that video of him pacing around and he's looking worried, and you knowing him, do you think it's possible that he might commit suicide? When you are a narcissist, there's always a possibility because you're suffering. But I don't think that he could see himself in a cage. I don't think he could see himself behind those bars in those type of situations. It's too many real dudes that dislike him. But then again, there's a lot of real dudes that need help. And him being buying bars, <laughs> he could probably help them. <laughs> right, right. When you look at everything that Diddy going through right now, do you think it's karma? Well, my personal opinion, I know what karma is. And karma is a spiritual realm. And in that spiritual realm of karma, it may not come back to you. It may come back to somebody in your family in that same spiritual realm of as you are. It could come back to your kids, your auntie, your uncle, your mama, your daddy, your grandma. It doesn't necessarily have to come back to you. Now, what has happened is his own narcissism, his own self has he began to believe his own evil shit will never get touched. And, what, and that brought on some other things that people who were probably spiritually stronger than him, people that had people praying for them, caused this whole shit to blow up in his face on him. Now, bruh, as I could be wrong, I, become, I could be right, I, I, I don't know. But I think Lil Rob come from a whole spiritual background. His family is a whole, like, none but Christian. And he was into the church before he got with Diddy. So I know his mama, his grandmama, his, they them prayer warriors then got on them, got on their knees. They didn't, <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't bless the crosses and everything. And they put some stuff on Diddy to get their son up out of that stuff. And you could call it karma. You could call it, <laughs> what, <laughs> revenge or whatever. But Lil Rob them, I believe, because he come from that spiritual background and stuff like that, they getting at him. Them folks is getting at him. Them prayer warriors is getting on top of them. And it brought it right back to him. So if that's what you call his karma, he got it. But karma don't always have to come back to the person that does the evil. When in a sense, you got to look at this. If karma was supposed to come back to him, he left his kids out there to be deal with the authorities. Because you can't believe me that he didn't know this was coming. He had to know this was coming. To be out like he was out? Because it's could be seen alleged, it's, it's allegedly that he took some kid back, 19-year-old boy, back to Antigua. 
I don't know how true it is, but that stuff going back to his plane land, I think that's the Caribbean Islands in Antigua, and he took some 19-year-old boy back home. Who does that? And for what reason? Or was he flying over the ocean dumping shit? Yeah, I mean, it's possible, man. It makes sense. And, you know, Cassie, her lawyer came out making a comment saying that, you know, they don't have no issue helping the feds. You think it's possible that Cassie will help the feds take down Diddy? Uh, what you think about that? She gonna have to. Because she made statements. So then they will subpoena her. If you don't go to court after you being subpoenaed, they can lock you up for the life of the trial. Or she could become a non-compliant witness, whereas that uh, a hostile witness where she say, I revoke my, my constitutional right and don't say nothing. I invoke, I invoke my constitutional right, you know what I'm saying, and don't say nothing. She could do that. But she has to ask, answer the subpoena. And I don't think she's going to sit down and go to court or go to, go to jail for Diddy. You understand? If, she's, if she is subpoenaed to come in there and speak on what happened to her, I believe she would do it. So Cassie, yeah. Even if they call me about the abuse with Kim, they say, they say yo, Gene, did you see him beat Kim? I said, on that particular case, no. Have I seen him rough Kim up and use the pillow? They, they, you know, he, he liked to play fight and be hurting the girls while he play fight. Have I seen him do that? Yeah, I, I've seen him done that. You understand? And I've asked him, you all right, you good? Y'all good? And she just look and stuff. He'll stop. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like a big uncle one time. So now, when he gets to the hospital, his right wrist is ripped open. So, Mr. Dill, uh, when you got to the hospital, what happened? Well, I seen his wrist ripped up. I would testify that I seen his uh, wrist uh, wrapped up in a uh, um, uh, uh, T-shirt. And he said it right there in front of Kim. You know what I'm saying? That, yo, know, you could have killed him because she hit an artery. You understand? And I would tell how, how I saw how Kim looked and would, I would testify to everything if I was told to. You know, if I was brought in to testify against that. You understand? I'm not going to sit there and wait in jail for him. Nah, I wouldn't do that. So you don't have no problem testifying? I have no problem sitting in the court of law doing my due diligence and testifying on stuff that I already spoke of on the internet. When I talked about him abusing Kim and she had to cut his wrist to get him off of him, I would tell what I saw when I went to the hospital. I have no problem I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody think. If I've already said it on the internet, if I've already said it on different platforms and programs, why wouldn't I? I have no problem with saying the relationship with him and Keefe D. I have no problem in saying that he went to Suge Knight and asked Suge Knight are we good out here? When Pac was right behind Suge, Suge had a, a red Bentley, Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce Bentley, Pac had the white one. In the back of the house some blues. I have no problem in saying that I told him if we go out this house, somebody gonna die tonight. And the notorious big came up dead. I have no problem in saying what I've been saying for years, since 97, 
if I'm brought into a court of law to testify on things that they want to ask me regarding his character or anything that I've displayed out here. Yeah, I get it. But if you Keefe D right now, right, and you see everything going on with Diddy right now, do you think it's a possibility that he might try to, you know, blame Diddy more for the whole situation with Tupac? Well, he's already involved Diddy in the situation because he made statements allegedly that Diddy offered him money. But see, he has to prove that. And can it be sensationalized and used in May? But still, where's your proof? Where's the tape? Where's the money uh, transfer? Where is uh, 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 anything that in a court of law would say that they had that agreement if he do that, which he didn't do it, which he didn't do it because there's no way if he had done that, Suge Knight still would have been his friend. Suge Knight would have still had conversations and been in the same room with him. I don't believe that. That's what people don't see. You understand? People don't see the fact that if Keefe D would have had something really to do with Pac's death, I don't believe Suge Knight would have had anything to do with him or if he would have seen him, it would have been on site or whatever this, that, and the third, or they would have been really, really going at it. Maybe I'm wrong. Good point. I know Mark Curry, you know, he spoke on what's going on with Diddy right now. And, you know, he revealed that, you know, Black Rob hated Diddy. Him and Craig, man. Well, I don't know if Black Rob hated him, but he was around Rob in his later years. You understand? I know that I've had a conversation with Rod and Rob felt like he did him wrong. You understand? But I can't say that Rob hated him. I knew Craig Mack hated him. And I knew D Diddy hated Craig Mack too. You understand? So I could speak on that, but I can't speak on Rob hating him. But Mark Curry was around Rob way more. Or uh, uh, I would see Rob hanging out on 115th, 115th, 116th in the doorway on First Avenue. Was that First? Yeah, First Avenue. I would see Rob hanging out right around there. And I would have a conversation with him here and there. Yo, Rob, you can't serve two gods, brother. You understand? You know, because K. Say loved him. And K. was just waiting for him to get himself back together so he could do some more music with him. Because Rob still had that talent. But, you know, Rob had some elements that people didn't know, like his kidney you know what I'm saying? It's kidney failure. So, but Craig Mack, during the time we was on tour and I knew Craig Mack wasn't coming back because Puff told Craig Mack, if you don't get rid of your fucking manager, I'm not fucking with you ever again. Now he got on, he got on programs and said, like, you see on one program, yo, we gonna come out with the Mac, new Mac album in January and Craig Mack looked at him like that. Like, you out your mind. And plus, Craig Mack was finna sign with uh, Death Row. That was gonna be Death Row first artist on the Death Row East team. So, Craig Mack hated him, and he hated Craig Mack. Did you hear about the latest news with Homeland Security about how they removed a whole lot of electronics from Diddy House? You heard about that? <laughs> Bruh. They rich. They're going to have a lot of electronics. They're going to have a lot of laptops. They're going to have a lot of computer stuff around there. A lot of times, people got to be smart. You cannot hide anything on no laptop. So if they was that dumb 
to put any videos or anything on any of those type of electronics. You understand? It's going to come to the forefront. Now, what they're looking for, because it was going on the premises of sex trafficking. They're looking for pictures of girls that may appear to be underage in a sexual um, context. Like they're in a sexual act. That's what they're looking for. So now they're going to go through all those devices. If somebody got any kind of weird fetishes that they got little kids or little girls or something like that in any kind of pictures or any kind of photos that they took out of there, then unless that individual is in the picture, who do you charge? Because the houses wasn't in his name. They was in companies' names that they could say all people had all kinds of access to them. Unless somebody testify that that's Diddy's room, nobody goes in that room but him. You understand what I'm saying? That's when they get the help to come in, the maid to come in. You understand? Or, or the people who work there, you know, where's Mr. Cone's room? Or oh, that's Mr. Cone's room. You understand what I'm saying? That's Mr. Cone's room. He only want anybody allowed in that room. You know, not unless Mr. Cones is there. They get those people to testify. But when they got a, a big ass mansion like that, that belongs to studios or uh, bad boy films and his daughter and stuff like that, they charge the person who the house is in their name. Would he be the type of person that let his daughters know take those type of crimes? We'll see. Yeah, that would be messed up if he let his kids take the charges. But they also reported that, you know, Homeland Security, when they raided Diddy, they was looking for the footage that Diddy was using to blackmail celebrities. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, you got to look at this. Um... They looking for anything. It's not just Lil Rob lawsuit, uh, the blackmail stuff. Like, they can't do that. They said that it was for, they went in there on the premises that it was for sex trafficking and uh, uh, underage minors in there. So now, if everything is being taped and he's taping people doing this and they find it in their house, they got to bring the tapes back to him. They got to make sure that he's the one walking around with the video camera. If he's, you understand what I'm saying? They got, they got to prove that. And then they got to have people to come in and say that he did that. They saw him with the video camera, like little Rob said, he used to tape him on the phone and all that stuff like that. Maybe he had burnouts or something like that. We don't know. But when they do that raid, they ain't just looking for pictures. Whatever they find, they find drugs, it goes to the DEA case. If they went down in the wine cellar and they found uh, cases of Sir Cock with um, cocaine in it, coca in it, they're going to get that to the DEA. They find a lot of guns and stuff like that, that's ATF. A lot of different agencies can get involved just on going on, their, on the sex trafficking case. It's whatever they find in there, bro. They're not just going to limit themselves to that one thing once they got the search warrant to go in. Yeah, this sh crazy, man. How you feel about the people that feel the type of way that, you know, Diddy, he wasn't there when his kids got arrested? 
I think 50, he even, you know, made a comment about it saying that, you know, Diddy, he got his kids in the bullshit now. Right. You know, like saying, uh, I think Misa even said something too. M M Misa Hilton, Misa, from when I used to bodyguard her, Misa is like one of those old Southern grandmas that strict as hell that a go get a switch, make you go get a switch, beat you with that switch. <laughs> and then if it break, go get you another switch and beat you with that one. She did not play when it came to rearing Justin. You understand? She, she, yo, Misa did not play. You understand? When I told her how Justin would act when he was around Quincy, she would get on top of his head with no joke. Kim was a little different. You know what I'm saying? She would let Quincy get away with murder. You understand? Um, Misa was a lot different. She she reminded me of one of my old Southern grandmas. Um, they beat your ass until the middle of next week. <laughs> so she was very, very upset that they had her son sitting over there in cuffs. You know, which they shouldn't have after they searched those kids. After they searched them, I know they grown men now. But after they searched them and because of their status, they should have set them to the side and either cuff them to the front. It was no need for them to cuff them in the back. You understand? Cuff them in the front because they wasn't trying to hurt nobody. They wasn't trying to do nothing. Like I told you, that's a tactic that law enforcement used. I believe he was a coward. There's no way he should have let that happen to his kids. I believe he knew what was going down and he probably thought they wasn't going to do that sh to the kids, but they did. They wanted to be gangsters. Lil' Combs did, so now you're a gangster. So you feel like Diddy, he already got a heads up and that's the reason why he wasn't at the house. Look what time, look what time of day it was, bro, in all places, and he's out of there. How you feel about 50? Because he reacted to, you know, Diddy House getting raided, and he said that it was over for Diddy. How you feel about him saying that? You agree? They don't come that hard and, and, and do all those things that they did unless they have something. I believe that 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 testimony of Jonathan. Uh, Odie made him come that hard. I mean, I, I believe that, you know, 50 is right when he say that. They don't come that hard and spend all that money. You understand? Because you got to realize is that the FBI was involved in that too. It was Homeland Security. They was their operation. But the FBI's, most of those guys are ex-lawyers or lawyers, went to law school. You understand what I'm saying? They did detective work about 10 years in somebody um department. They not they not coming with no bullshit. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I know Macy spoke out about Diddy House getting raided. If you can, right, because he got the show with Cam and a lot of people, they don't know about the history between Mace and Diddy. Let the people know how Diddy did him dirty, if you don't mind. From what I know, I think that um Diddy wasn't teaching Mace the business. You understand? He was using Mace as other artists to write rhymes on other people, write songs on other people's albums, on his album, uh, and taking their talents and stealing their publishing on different albums and different records. Prime example, Mace wrote that bad boy joint. I ain't even see him at the premiere because I believe Diddy owned most of the publishing on that, which ended up being a big record that for went over to movies. I think Mace was upset the fact that he learned that when he learned the business, he saw how Diddy had robbed him. He had took the glory 
for the albums, the music, and all the records that he had did. And he, he got pennies for it. You understand? 8,000 here, 10,000 there. You understand? When they when the, the record go platinum, <laughs> uh, Diddy's getting two, 300,000 and only gave him pennies for writing a song. Getting points on publishing that he didn't even deserve. So Mace learning the business and knowing the business, it led him to be upset. Diddy was teaching him wrong. Like Diddy was teaching him not to even speak to people, brother. You understand what I'm saying? Nation to come up in there. Yo, what's up? How you doing? He had that Harlem smile. You know what I mean? What I mean? Like he, he happy. He shining. Cause you know, he had a lot of jewels that the other artists didn't have. He used to come up in the studios. He used to come places fly. Did he tell him, yo, you ain't going to never be famous because you always speaking to people. Let them speak to you. I seen Mace stop speaking to people. When I told him, man, don't listen to that nigga with that old dumb shit. Be you. But he found out at the big die. And Puff left his ass out in California. He knew only Puff was for self. So Masonum didn't have what these kids have now with the internet, with the YouTubes, to learn the business themselves or listen to somebody teaching the business and stuff to watch out for. It was word to mouth or somebody sitting you down or you hiring a lawyer back then to teach you what you're supposed to know by representing you. So Mace has every right to be upset with Diddy because Diddy really stole his, his legacy in the music. See, what you got to understand this is that a lot of those kids learned the business after they signed their contracts. They learned the business after they was in the business for three or four years. So now, when they learned the business and they was doing, uh, sitting there right there, writing a whole record, a whole song, right? And Diddy was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, take this, take this, take that. Give them 10,000 for that one song that they wrote. And that song goes platinum two or three times. And he get the 25% for being the writer on that because they wrote the song and gave it to him. And he's on as the publisher, as the writer. You understand what I'm saying? He getting a percentage of the writing that was done and all he gave was 10,000. They learned and late and, and, and they learned later and later in the business that they was do that publishing. He shouldn't have got the percentage that he got on there. Cuz he gave them 10,000, 5,000, 8,000 for writing. So now they learned the business late. And when they learned the business, they seen how wrong that he was doing them. Even though the music people want you to say, well, we're taking a chance. We're taking a thing. Yo, listen to me, man. You wouldn't be there if you think that you wasn't talented and they could sell records off you and using your talents. They've seen enough people that come through. So you writing all those hits and you not getting the money from them. How many years Mace didn't get the money from 
bad boy, bad, that, that shit that they use on Will Smith and them bad boys. I went to the premiere with Puff. Mace wasn't even there. But he wrote that. So my whole thing about it is this. These kids learn the business and learn how they've been misused. And now they get resentful. And they have every right to be. And then we got these, these clown motherfuckers be saying, yo, well, they should know the business. They should know that. Now that information is out here. When Mason was young like that, they was just happy to get off the block. They was happy not to be out there uh, 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 selling drugs so the jump out boys don't rough them up, you know, and lock them up for bullshit. They was happy to get that money to buy their jewels and do what they needed to do, and they didn't have to be on the block. And they had people like Andre Orell, Diddy, Russell Simmons, them that was working for the big companies that was taking and using those kids for their own self. Unfortunate, man. But I mean, Mace, he doing the thing now, though. You know, he just signed a big deal with Cam, so... You know, shout out to Mace, man. And I know Cam, he made a, you know, comment about, you know, Diddy House getting rated. And he pointed out that, you know, they rated Diddy House on the anniversary of Life After Dove. You think there's anything to that? Man, let me tell you something. If y'all don't think that law enforcement agencies know things like that and they plan shit like that, so it could go down in history like that, y'all playing them short. This just so happened to be on the anniversary. They planned that, bruh. I don't think there's nothing spiritual about it. You know, I hear people talking about Sloan, uh, uh, some lady named Sloan Bello was talking about that it happened during that time or whatever like that. Or she predicted that Diddy would go down during that time. Law enforcement be knowing all that shit, bro. They got a whole team that sit up and just watch the internet. These motherfuckers get paid, they agents, they get paid to watch the internet, to watch you, to watch me. So they know that shit. I don't think there's nothing spiritual about it. I just think that they were being funny. Let's do it on this day. Yeah, Yo, you might be right, man. But I got to ask you, yo, how you feel about what's going on right now? Them trying to replace, you know, Paul's and no homo with no Diddy. <laughs> how you feel about that, yo? <laughs> um, I think that that's some kids. And if that's what they want to do, bro, <laughs> I wouldn't give him that much satisfaction, you know what I'm saying? And saying no Diddy, when you're saying something that relates to uh, a homosexual vibe or somebody saying something that's maybe seeing what they saying, gay or homosexuals, like no Diddy. Nah, don't even, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, do the no pause game, you understand? I'm definitely not gonna do the no diddy game. Yeah, I feel you. But they also say that, you know, the only reason why, you know, Diddy was actually rated is because of five people. They said that it was four Jane Doe's and one John Doe who, you know, was giving them information about, you know, sex trafficking, domestic violence, and racketeering. So, you know, I guess it was five people you know, behind the scenes, giving them information about Diddy. So it's crazy, man. Uh, you know, several accusations uh, regarding sex trafficking and drugs um, led to the raid, brother. The, the, civil, the civil suit had uh, a criminal 
allegations in there. Like I said before, they looked at that. But people around Diddy were saying things that had authorities believe that he had this kind of power to do this. Young Miami. When she spoke to the girl, Gina, do you remember this? She said, if I tell Diddy to tell you to eat my pussy, you will be down there being a carpet muncher. She said that to the girl, Gina. And you wouldn't have no problem with it. Now, if I tell Diddy to tell you to do that to me, you would do that. She told off on him. That's something that's showing that he has some kind of power over people. Whatever he tell you to do to me, you would do it sexually. When she makes statements like that, that falls in the category of having that sex trafficking thing, that atmosphere for sex trafficking. If he tells you to do that, Cassie, Jonathan Obi, I was doing this to Cassie. Well, he said this five years before Cassie came out, bruh. He said this five years before Cassie come out. Nobody's... Five years. Three to five years. Think three to five years when he got... When he got... Um... He shot up one of Trump's offices or something like that. He came into the feds. He told the feds this whole story way before Cassie came out. We didn't even know he knew Cassie and Diddy. All of a sudden, I think he disappeared. I don't know if he's still alive. Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard from him since that video, but I want to backtrack right to Cassie. Why do you think Cassie would help the feds take down Diddy? Like, why do you think she would do that? I believe that she didn't want to be seen like Miss uh, Maxwell because if, uh, if, if Cassie was doing what Diddy, if Cassie was involved with any young kids or any people be be below age, I know everybody say she is with um uh, Diddy would get the, the males, make her wear white fingernails and all that stuff like that. But if she was ever engaged in young girls being in a sexual act, she still is guilty as he is. So for her not to be like the Epstein lady, I think her Giselle, G Giselle is Maxwell. I, I, I forgot her name, but I know it's Maxwell. She would help the government and become a star witness as well as the guy that they caught with the drugs. So she would have to help so they don't match her. If they got her any of those tapes or anything with people that appear to be underage, any young girl, you still are guilty. So now they might not bring charges against you if you're willing to help them. Damn. Good shit, man. Good shit. Anything else, show? I want to plug my book, man. Oh, okay, okay. Let the people know. Yo, listen. Uh, okay, hold on. Thanks to the Art of Dialogue, this is like the number one hip-hop book. Gene Deal, My World of Bodyguard and a Hip-Hop Star. Go check out the reviews on Amazon. April 4th, the second book is out, will be out on Amazon, and it's a hell of a read. You'll see it on Amazon, Gene Deal, Life After Bodyguard and a Hip Hop Star. Yo, all the dialogue, thank y'all, appreciate y'all. 
See y'all at the trial.